I've made countless styles of projects over the years, from really big down to the itty bitty, generally classifying it as something like nano, mini, or micro. Working small allows me to truly challenge my creative muscles while also pushing any perceived boundaries. Building within the confines of the small scale is challenging on its own, let alone finding the right materials, but let's not forget the ongoing maintenance. It's often more challenging than the build itself. All of this begs the question, with nano projects being difficult to build and maintain, do they even hold up well long term? That brings us to a setup that I'm quite fond of, the DIY micro all-in-one snail aquarium. I made it just over a year and a half ago, or 500 days to be more specific. The whole thing began with this incredible hinge top acrylic box. I think it was intended for bathroom organization, but all I could see was an aquarium with the main viewing area in this compartment and filtration in the others. I found a pump that fit perfectly to facilitate this, but I had to make modifications to account for an overflow, pass through under this divider, and a filter return. Easy enough. A cutting wheel installed on my Dremel tool allowed me to cut weird teeth in the top for an overflow, as well as a pass through in the bottom. As for the return, I first accounted for the pump. I combined a rigid airline with shrink tubing and vinyl tubing and marked for it accordingly. I put a wire into the airline so that when I heated it with a torch and bent it, the tubing wouldn't kink as in this example here. After removing the wire I was left with this, which worked perfectly for the return without the need for further modification to the container. I did a test run to ensure proper functionality, but there was an issue. The divider wasn't sealed from the rest of the container, so I had to seal it off from the inside with silicone. Once secured, I made a barrier for the biological filter compartment out of knitting mesh to retain small bits of lava rock and a filter sponge. Bringing beauty to small spaces through hardscape is challenging as I alluded to earlier, especially in acrylic setups because of how easily they scratch. To avoid that and make my life easier, I built a separate structure that's the same size as the tank's viewing area to build the scape within. I selected a range of small twigs and stones and began scaping from a central location on the side. Not only would this look cool, but it would allow me to easily hide the filter components from view. As it came together, I used super glue to lock items together. Twigs and smaller stones made for additional texture and variation. The result being a spiraling, ready-made scape that I could simply drop into the tank. Frost film made it appear even more dynamic. I added a layer of white sand, followed by accent stones and limestone sand for texture. With such a small space and lack of planting substrate, I disliked epiphytes that could grow accordingly. Anubias non a petite fit the criteria flawlessly. Sousfosertong made for perfect ground coverage, while Hokuraisea moss made for more texture, and Busophalangia brownie brown completed the look. After filling the tank, I realized the flow of water was way too strong. I installed a flow valve in line with the pump so I could make adjustments to that. I also modified the lid so it could fit around the filter's cord. A mini USB light mounted with double-sided tape to the back completed the tank for real. With the setup of this size, I felt that the only suitable inhabitants were probably snails. So I went to one of my other aquariums, collected a few bladder snails, and put them in this one. They cruised around, explored, and honestly looked great in this environment. My goal was to create a micro aquarium that appears large despite its stature, and I think I pulled that off quite well. I wasn't only thinking of looks though, I considered functionality because I wanted this to last. As I've expressed, little setups often fail to meet these requirements, which cause them to be hard to maintain and inevitably unsuccessful. I can plan all I want, but results speak for themselves, and I can only truly answer the question from the beginning and say if it was successful by showing how it's fared to this very day. Although it's really grown in and doesn't appear as refined as it did last January, I would say that this micro setup is doing well all this time later. Every single plant I put in here is growing without any special treatment, and the snails appear to still be enjoying the space. That said, I haven't seen any of the larger ones in some time, and all that remains are a few decomposing shells. What I do see though are plenty of small ones that have taken their place. 
Another glaring feature you may have noticed that wasn't there before is all of this mom build up on the bottom. This isn't bad and is indicative of an established setup, but it doesn't look great. There's also a bit of algae on the acrylic and other surfaces, and the water is full of tannins, but what do you expect? You know, I kept talking about how I designed this setup for ease of maintenance to improve the odds of its success, but the irony of it all is that I've done virtually nothing to it since I built it a year and a half ago. All that I've done was this. I occasionally topped it off to account for water loss to evaporation, as well as feeding the snails. Otherwise, I haven't done anything else, but I think it shows. Additionally, there were extended periods of times where it had little to no light during the move last year. As I explained earlier, small setups like this tend to fill in faster and require more maintenance as a result. However, a lot of the choices I made, like using slow-growing small plants and providing more than adequate filtration, have helped spread out the need to do so. If I had used aqua soil and stem plants, for example, the whole thing would have filled in long ago, but even now I could keep going as is without intervention. I'm tired of it looking like this though, so the time has finally come for me to bring new life to an old setup. Even though I took steps to make this easily maintained, like gluing the hardscape together, I don't anticipate it will be a walk in the park. Anyway, I'll start by trimming the plants so I can truly see what's going on in here. The first thing I noticed was this pesky string of java moss. I didn't intentionally put it in here, but chances are it snuck in with the Sousvasa tong, which has also grown out of control. I trimmed up various sections and pulled it out with tweezers. The majority of this can be repurposed for other projects, so I'll save it for later. I have to be really careful as I'm doing all of this because one wrong move could ruin the entire arrangement. You can see here that this branch broke free and the scape itself moves. I also removed unsightly leaves to encourage the growth of new foliage. Addressing the boost was easy, but I struggled with the Anubius because of where it's located. I stirred up a lot of mom through this process so visibility isn't that great now, but from what I can see I've thinned it out enough. However, the algae on the acrylic is even more visible now, and it's driving me nuts. I just got a piece of PVC board, moved the snails, and carefully scraped along the acrylic. This worked flawlessly. I also need to clean the filter. I filled a container with dechlorinated water and meticulously removed the components to ensure it's all free of debris. It took a while, but I wanted to do it right. However, the mesh floated to the top, which is unfortunate, but I can work around it. I let everything settle so I could easily remove debris, algae, and mom with an airline tube. I got a siphon going and drained the water through a net in case I accidentally got a snail in the process. Due to the small volume of water, I had to drain and fill it back up several times to remove as much debris as possible. Before filling it up for the final time, I put the filter components back. I also serviced the pump. Then I put it back, filled up the tank, adjusted a few things, and let it settle. I've made an array of nano builds that were much more difficult to maintain than this, but it was tedious nonetheless. I'm looking at it here, and although it looks much better after some love, I feel like it's still missing something. I added a few Anubius plants to offset the look. Well that was an easy fix, and I think it made a huge difference. From the entire DIY build of the tank, to the mini scape, and the snails, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this tank. There is nuance to it of course, but to further answer the question from the beginning, yes, nano setups do hold up long term. With the proper design and occasional maintenance, they'll last just as well as a larger setup, which I think further solidifies the beauty and diversity of this hobby. Nothing left to do now but feed the snails, sit back, and enjoy this little aquarium for what it is.